on this exciting episode of the Pixel Game Squad. That's not even a trophy, that's a statue. Rip, I've seen one of these before. I've seen it at my local Toys R Us or my local game store. That's not possible. Literally, it's just like, boom. Oh, you got one in the box. I needed one. Hello? Hello? Ricky, Ben, and myself are headed to an undisclosed location, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this guy has some super rare stuff, but we don't know really what he has. So I'm gonna tell you, you guys are in for a treat. All right, guys, we're not here with Riff, but Ricky, where are we going today? We're gonna go get me some, uh, some pretty cool stuff. We're gonna get, uh, I, I, don't, I don't wanna spoil it. It's something really cool that I've been t telling you guys I was gonna get. We're heading out there right now, and we got Benny Boy, we got Curtis. I know what he's getting. So, pressing pause, you're not going to believe this, I am currently playing Super Mario Wonder on a 330 inch OLED screen right now. These are the new X-Real Air 2s and they are unbelievable is the word I would use. Uh, originally, yes, the company reached out to me and they were like, you want to talk about these? And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm down to talk a 60 seconds about these. And then I used them. I'm not going to talk about these for 60, six, 60, 60 seconds. I'm going to come back to you guys later in the video and give you guys a full rundown. I'm not even going to time it. I'm just going to go through this because these are pretty unbelievable. These blew away my expectations in a ton of ways. Um, with the way I can play video games, it's completely changed the way I thought about playing my Switch. And I don't say that as like a bullet point. I say that as because, holy crap, um, I hate traveling. I'm genuinely excited to travel and play Mario Wonder on a 300 inch OLED screen during the airplane. Editing, all this stuff. There's so much stuff that completely, uh, unbelievable. Look, pristine quality, all the above. I'm, I'm using every good keyword I can think of because that's what I genuinely think of these things. I've texted every friend I have. I'll see you guys a little later in the video. So come to find out what Ricky's getting is two of the grails. These are two grails that Ricky's wanted for a very long time. I think Ricky's been talking about getting these for years. All right, so here we are. I wanna show you guys what I'm getting. Can you already see it? Yeah. Oh, so this is what I'm getting right here. These two bad boys, these, these are awesome Mario statues. This is an 80s one, and this is the 90s one. The big Mario statues. Now I know there's a lot of people on the internet who talk about these big Mario statues, right? They come up every once in a while, you'll find a crazy statue collector who is like, hey, I got one, hey, I got one. But I dug deep. I looked deep in the internet, I found something that I've never heard somebody mention on the internet. There was a story of a guy who went and picked one up and asked the guy he bought it from for a deeper information, and yes, there was info. The guy's name was Bob. There was a guy named Bob and he was the guy who was commissioned by Nintendo, by Nintendo to make 400 of these. And guess where they were supposed to go? A lot of people say, hey, I've seen them at my local shop, seen them here, seen them there. They were all for Best Buy. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but wait, Riff, I've seen one of these before. I've seen it at my local Toys R Us or my local game store. That's not possible. They weren't just for Best Buy. Well, of those 400, there wasn't enough Best Buys in that area to fulfill the 400, so they got trickled out to different areas. How unreal is this? I'm so happy to finally hear the story about this because I've been wondering about these for years. I, uh, unfortunately, I had to get rid of the Star Fox and Tails to get these two, but totally worth it because these are amazing. They're about, three and a half, four feet tall. Dude, they are so cool. Unreal, amazing, and also Bob worked on like McDonald's displays and other things like that, Disney displays, so Bob's a legend. I can't believe Ricky's getting these. How long have you been wanting these? <laughs> Since maybe like 10 years now. Wow, man. Maybe longer. Yeah, you definitely had to get rid of the Sonic and Tails, but. I know, dude, but these are so much cooler. Dude, your wife's gonna kill you. She actually was okay with it. Wow. <laughs> Next, Ricky gets his hands on some employee awards. Now, the way these were handed out is back in the day at Nintendo, and I'm sure they still do it to a different extent maybe, is not only that, look what else they have out here. So we're gonna try to get some of this stuff as well, but look, dude, we got Nintendo trophies. 
What are the trophies from? Oh, they're for their employee trophies. I don't think we're supposed to show names. <laughs> so I'm covering up the names. The longer you've been there or for different milestones, Nintendo will give you an award. Hey, five-year award, 10-year award, uh, maybe safety or different things like that or a creator award. It could be anything. But this is stuff that you had to be at Nintendo to find. And by the way, they are to get, but these things are extremely heavy. Color. Look at this, Matt. Look at this. How cool is that? That's pretty much another statue right there. That's not even a, that's not even a trophy. That's a statue. I just love how you're covering the name. <laughs> <laughs> the name. But dude, just like it's just like one rare thing after another. You see dude, this? It's insane. This is some crazy stuff. All right, pal. You got to hold them later, and they are they are quite the workout. You may be able to do a couple curls with them, and, and actually see a little bulge. But this stuff's insane. It's awesome. Dude. All right, guys, so he just brought out something super rare. What is it, Ricky? This is a Gremlins 2 prop from the movie. Look at how bizarrely cool that is. In 1990, we got Gremlins 2, the new batch, which by the way, I love that movie. And this guy has a prop, a, a used prop from the movie. That's unreal, it's next level and it looks so good, but I guess, I mean, it has to look good if it was used in the movie, so. Dude, this thing is awesome. Dude, look at this thing. <laughs> Something from the set. All this stuff, seeing Ricky and Curtis and Ben get to be a part of this and hold this stuff, I'm getting a little sad, and I might have to quit Retro Rick and Phoenix Race Sale and Hustle at Home Mom because that's why I couldn't go because I'd work for them. Just a random box, too. Look at the detail. Gremlins 2, the new batch. So when I was at this undisclosed location, which now he's a homie, but... All right, without Riff, we're just kind of like casually looking at all this rare stuff, but look how many boxes <laughs> up this is, boxes. dude. Mario 2s and Mario, I think these are just box, box, box. I think I picked up a pretty good amount of boxes. They were all Super Mario 2 Bros, all in the NES box. Some were complete, most of them were just boxes. Cool. So this was, this came in a box bundle. The rest oh, did not. Oh my God. And then what, this one is insane. This one is still sealed. And then I picked up a bunch of Super Mario 3 boxes, and I didn't even realize that I had like three or four left bros in there. So kind of came up a little bit. So, all right, Ricky. So what do we got going on right here? And these are from E3. Both of them are from E3. They were little displays in E3. Might mean little, I don't mean little. They're actually pretty big. They're, oh my gosh, it's so cool. I always love that Nintendo branding anywhere, anywhere on any of these things. This is amazing. These are not, these aren't for sale, but I wish they were because I would take all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look at these bad boys. Which one's this so one? Cool. So that's from a that's from a what is that? A slot machine in like in Japan they have them slot machine. You can see the little holes in the bottom. Oh, like right there. So that's where you attach it to it. I've only seen an M82 cabinet a couple times in person. Literally, it's just like boom. <laughs> uh, I've always wanted one of these. You can play 12 games at a time. You just. Select. If you don't know what this is, it's a, a little unit that was made back in the day for people to be able to play and test up to 12 different games for the Nintendo. Again, I've not seen that many out in, in public, in person myself. Uh, actually, if I'm being fully honest, I think one ever. And then in this video is where I'm seeing the other one technically through Ricky. Gosh, that thing's so cool. So cool. I've seen these, but man, I can never, I need one. I'll get one one day. <laughs> but that is a grail piece. Uh, just unbelievable part of Nintendo history that people don't really mention much in the world. I feel like I've heard it way back in the days when I first started collecting the retro, and now uh, it's brought back up again. So M82 cabin, uh, someone find me a good lead on that. All right, Ricky, so what'd you end up getting? All right, so there was some crazy, crazy stuff here, but at the end, I ended up getting all this. I got the, the Nintendo Awards. I got that little statue, those two statues, this NES Classic, because I've been wanting one, so might as well. Trophies, just because, I mean, more Mario stuff, the better. And then, but, oh. And these bad boys right here, some SPs, but I mean, look at Curtis over there. All right, we got our grabs. It's time to load up the truck and get these bad boys home. Dude, oh my this is gosh, amazing. dude, this is a crazy, crazy. This thing. is amazing. These are amazing. I mean, these are like once in a lifetime things. So, man, pretty good catch. Pretty cool. Ricky, this is crazy. <laughs> we got one. We got two. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, 
so now we're here at Riffy's. Riffy's. <laughs> Ricky's. Now we're here at Ricky's and we're ready to show Riff is here. So I'm going to be able to surprise him with something crazy. All right. So I'm at Ricky's and you and Curtis, already and Ben, went mm -hmm. and had a good time. I couldn't make it. I literally just had editing stuff for work. But I have to see these bad boys. I, uh, the audience has already seen them. So they've seen them before I have at this point. So well, that's true. I want to see. Da -na 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 -na. She's like jumping on the boat. <gasps> Storm. So I'm looking at these statues and I'm blown away just seeing them in person. I've seen like one at Kelsey Lewin shop a long time ago. Wow, he's clean. He's really clean. Holy cow. So obviously he gave you guys already the information about where this came from. Right? Yeah. Okay, so I don't need to try to sound intelligent. Well, not sounding intelligent. <laughs> what was he pointing to? Do we know? Or just for display? To you right now. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Point. <laughs> <laughs> but to see both of them side by side, it's so interesting. Apparently, you know, the other one is from the Mario 64 days, the one I talked about earlier. But apparently this other one is from the 80s. Look how tall, so here's for scale. I'm a six foot tall man. So on the dot, so he's about what, four? Maybe yeah. four-ish, four and a half feet, Gabe? And what I find interesting, and again, this is any part of Nintendo's history, especially within Mario, Nintendo was always trying to figure out how is Mario gonna look. Oh, baby, side by side. Who's taller? Oh, I think, oh. I think 80s is barely taller. Like, look, come look at this, Gabe. Look at like the fatness difference right here. This is what I like. So you can see, look at how thin this hand is versus this hand is massive. If you go back to the early Donkey Kongs, to Mario 1, to Mario 2, to Mario 3, to Super Super Mario advertisements, to 90s ads, 80s ads, things were always changing. So it's interesting just to see them side by side, pretty much the same height, pretty much the same figure. Well, they're built completely different. One of those Marios works out a little more than the other, I'll tell you that much. Oh my gosh, look at his belly compared to that one. <laughs> Holy moly, Mario. Higher, higher, uh... He hit up a good diet right there. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, let's get them in the, look at the M's different too. Look at the thin M and look at the thick M. The little trophy figures that are in the box. Oh, I love these, dude. Oh, I've almost bought a couple of these at a convention before. I, I've seen them start to pop up a little bit here and there now. And I think that's due to the fact that, you know, YouTube got big and collecting got big with the NES and everyone was collecting for NES and games, 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 games. Everyone was talking about games, but now a lot of people, including us, are kind of pushing with uh, the excitement for weird stuff, odd stuff. So I feel like the boxes, I've never realized how jank the boxes look. But the boxes are jank. They look very bootleg. They're very bootleg. But they're not, oh, you got one in the box. I needed one. I was like, I want it. More and more vendors and sellers and collectors are kind of being like, hey, check out these little trophy figures. They're cool. He has them, but he couldn't find them. So maybe So these are the time. different versions of Mario. These are different versions of Mario. So you got wow. that one. Wow. This one. And Which one's this that? one's dope. Oh, that's the best one. The jumping stomp. The jumping one. And that one's awesome. These are sealed. And look at look at look at look at the bottom. Toys are us. That we're there. What was really cool is the employee statues, the, the small heavy ones, and then the big old ones, the four footers. Oh how cool is that? Yeah, dude, look at that. You got Fat Boy and Slim. Fat Boy Slim right there. Some of these employee statues are modeled exactly the same as these statues. It's so interesting to me because they weren't like the same builders who made them or same shapers or whatever you want to call them. That's a Shima. That's a Shima. That's so cool. Yeah, that's the thinner one with the less belly and then that's the other one. So odd, but super cool. I did not think I mentioned it in the video when I saw it. I think I just realized it when I was watching the video back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've made a discovery. Call me Nicholas Cage and put me on the National Treasure. Thinking back to the early days of what we did, our old show called Retro Liberty, our passion was strictly find Nintendo games, NES games, in fact, just NES games really was our goal. Let's find these old Nintendo games. And as more and more time went by and we started digging deeper into our love for Nintendo and things of the past, our horizon spread from, from video games to boxes, to toys, to magazines, to artwork, to statues. And I feel like it's such a cool place to be on YouTube, been doing this for so long, that we can look back and see our passions be aligned where they were, but in the same thing, just spread out much more vast. There's so much of a bigger world to collect for. I feel like I see and hear so many people saying, the hobby's dead, game collecting's dead, this is so hard, I don't enjoy it. If you find your passion in this, I feel like it can be much greater than it ever was. For us right now, in this space that we're in, within YouTube and within collecting and reselling and everything that's part of our journey and gets us everything and to meet new people and find new things and expand everything we never thought we could find, it's perfect. It's 
better than ever. I love it. Well, we're back. This is the X-Real, formerly known as N-Real, glasses, headset. Uh, also, I did find out they are the number one selling uh, headset in the market. I just kind of want to poke into some things that I think are important for me to talk about as a consumer of something like this. The first thing that really stuck out to me when I started playing these and started using these was the sound. I wasn't sure if these were going to even have sound when I found out they were coming my way. It has great sound. This directional sound system ensures that only users can hear, offering better privacy, protection, and minimizing disturbances to others. That, that, that is what I want to talk about. And the reason is, let's just say my wife and I have very different preferences when it comes to what we watch um, when we're in our room. My wife likes to watch a lot of Hallmark stuff, which I'm, don't, I'm not opposed to, but I like to watch my horror stuff last sometimes. Last night, I was able to put these on, watch myself a little horror movie, Well, my wife is watching her thing. She's not hearing, she's not listening, she's not watching what I'm doing. I'm in my own world, she's in hers, which is a couple, we stay as close as we can, but when it's those time for those separations, we can do it. It's also important to note that there is brightness up and down right here on the glasses themselves, right on the hilk right here, on the handle, if that's what it's actually called. When I got these, I knew right away that the quality was gonna be more than I'm used to because even just like the packaging of this thing, the way everything was put together from the box that it came into, each cord that was in there, everything was like in a high-end, nice box. And as someone who does like marketing and YouTube and other stuff in that realm in the world, you know when you're getting a good product when someone's putting a ton of time and effort into each part of this right you want them to know that they're getting a good quality item okay back to the gaming back to the gaming you basically can hook this up there's this thing called the beam right here by the way this is a, a product that comes with it as well or a product that you can order but this is called the beam all you have to do you literally plug your glasses into it it's good it's going then from here, you can plug into anything that's USB-C. So directly into a Switch dock, into a phone, into a Samsung. Into, I hooked up into my MacBook. No problems, no weird installation, download firmware, hardware, too much time. It literally immediately gave me a giant, I'm pointing right here because that's where my screen was. Immediately a giant massive screen. My editing window, my editing screen, I was not in the way. I was not spending any more extra money on crazy monitors, on stands, on hooks. I automatically had it right there, massive in OLED beautiful quality. You can hook it up to your PlayStation 5. Again, anything with USB-C, but again, a Switch for me, again, tablet, Netflix, mobile gaming, however you want to do it, a Switch is a game changer. Because when you travel to places, you got to bring the dock, you got to unhook it, you got to buy some weird portable dock, hope the TV has like the right settings, hope that you can unhook the HDMI cords from the TV and put them in there. You literally bring this with you and you're there. You're mobile, you're on the go. Take this on a plane, take it anywhere. Look, you got your whole entire Nintendo Switch. Oh, what size screen do you have? 330 inch OLED. I was so excited about this. I was quite literally texting all my friends, holy crap about this. And my friend Jared actually replied to me. He's like, I gotta look into this. And immediately his friends were telling him that it's huge in the Steam Deck community. I don't have a Steam Deck myself, but apparently, if you don't know, like a portable gaming console as well, apparently this is like all the rage in there and I totally get it. I was looking at some of the briefs that they sent me and they said to also mention that this is gonna be, the X-Reel is gonna be available in the UK, but it's available here now. I wanna make it very clear that I'm purposely just kind of talking with you guys as I get my hands on it because it's not something I get to do on the channel. Normally when I get sponsorships, I have to like read briefs and dive deep and figure out what I'm supposed to say, how they want me to say it. But this just being able to kind of be hands on with it and be blown away by the product is like kind of a, a new fun thing for me. So I'm just having a good time with this. Now I remember, I've been waiting, I've been trying, I had something to say earlier and I couldn't remember. I can't do, I'm not gonna name names, big bulky VR. I can't do it, I've tried it, I get motion sickness. No motion sickness, that's huge for me. Go back, watch any of our podcasts, anything like that. Everything I always say about big VR headsets is I struggle with motion sickness. I have put hours and hours into these, not a ounce, and let's be honest, it looks cooler. I know this is purely superficial, but it looks dang cooler like a nice good pair of sunnies. So you know there are some, a cap right here. When you put this cap on, it completely blacks out everything around you. So you're getting like a theater screen basically for yourself. You're not being distracted by anything. But if you like more of that like AR holographic type look, well you're still getting the OLED. You can literally just pop these off. I think you do it from underneath, yep. And now I can still see my screen in great perfect quality, but I can also see the world around me. Very, very Star Wars-esque, if you will. So my wife just 
pointed this out to me. I, I played about four hours with these on last night, like straight, and there was still battery left. Now my wife pointed out though that they say that there's at least up to five hours, which I can say that I played four and it kept going well. So that's a good amount of time. And then what, what were you saying about the display modes, Chanel? Well, XREL is the only brand in the industry that offers multiple display modes that deliver solid experience. They have air casting, body anchor, smooth follow, and side view mode. I love it how you are so good at reading it like you are working like for a business, like for a company. I feel like this is one of those products you don't even have to sell because it's just so good. What color do they come in? I think they come in red. Mine also came with like, I didn't even, honestly, I didn't mess with it, but I think it also comes with like a couple different, wait, <laughs> that way I can see the world around me. Ready? Dun, dun, dun. I can see, I'm literally looking at a 330 inch you guys don't even know Mario right now. And then, oh, also, so I have blue. I have the ability to swap mine to blue. Do I do it? Do I do it? I don't know. I kind of dig in the black, but the blue would be nice also. My, my daughter just came in and she's like, can I please play them in again? My neighbors came over to play last night. My wife was playing. My kids were playing. If you guys want to check these out, I will leave a link um, down in the description below. Again, this is one of those times where I'm, I feel like it's something you at least have to try out and experience for yourself because it is one of those unreal type things where when I put it on, it was one of those like, whoa, okay. From a guy who had my kid doing VR stuff all the time and headsets, uh, I did not enjoy them, 100% honest. You've never heard me talk about it on the channel. Uh, they've reached out before. These immediately put them on, told my wife who takes care of sponsorship stuff, I was like, give them whatever time frame they need because I want to talk about these. Absolutely check out the link down in the description below if you're interested. Uh, I will say for me, can never speak for you, beyond what I've seen in years and, and at least in the gaming world advancements. I know for you know Netflix and watching stuff and streaming and different platforms, but as far as gaming goes, I'm just like jaw drop. And if you do decide to purchase them inside the box, you'll get the traveling case, the X-Rail Air 2 glasses, of course, three nose pads, the light shield, prescription lens frame, USB-C cable, and a cleaning cloth. Oh, baby, let's go. Check them out. Uh, my wife, she's, she's selling right now. So with that said, it's time for Ricky to attempt and pretend that he has a place to uh, put all this. Until then, Ricky. Oh, I got tons of space. You see that in there? Oh, let's see how much room Ricky has. Ready? Everyone want to see the definition of hoarding? Buying big stuff. And I'll just put it in my game room. Oh, yep, this is a problem. That's an actual... I... The ceiling? <laughs> nope, you're sick. From this